Whereas to get the level of of eusocial behavior you see in humans, the next animal that you have to go to look at to find similar behavior is a fucking termite. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So why are we primates that live like termites? What the hell happened? Oh, Chaos Prime asks, what's so great about vegetative cognition that we should listen to it in preference to meat cognition? Boom. First this explain what the hell he's talking about. Yeah. Um, so this is probably a reference to um, one of my long-running shticks about plant consciousness. Um, and actually, this is this is quite related to what we've been talking about in terms of psychedelics. You asked me to share a psychedelic experience for you. Here's Here's a summary of many of the experiences. Um, plants are conscious. Not only are they conscious, they're intelligent. Not only are they intelligent, they have an agenda and they care about you. Mm-hmm. Not only do they have an agenda and they care about you, but if you want to talk to them, they will talk to you too. Holy shit, dude. <laughs> they care about you? Yes. Care, care does not necessarily imply positive regard, just that they have some investment in you know how you behave around them. I see. Okay. Um, so... One of the things that I do truly believe is that the Neolithic revolution that began with the invention of agriculture and especially irrigation um, was basically a psychic event um, that led to the creation of the class of egregores that we call the gods of the old world. Oh, you think industrial industrialism or agriculture? Agriculture. I'm talking about 12,000 years ago. Okay, right. Um, so this is when humans began transitioning from a nomadic hunter-gatherer lifestyle to a sedentary farming city building lifestyle things that went along with that were the creation of the idea of property of territory um territory is older than that and it's sort of tribal sense but territory in the in the way that nations think of territory Mm -hmm. ownership of land right um the idea of sovereignty the king who came out of this era um and the idea of mass scale coordinated eusocial behavior as opposed to the more family oriented behavior which has you know more direct genetic linkage um whereas to get the level of of eusocial behavior you see in humans the next animal that you have to go to look at to find similar behavior is a fucking termite Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so why are we primates that live like termites what the hell happened it's well put damn dude so what I think happened is um, the grains happened. Uh-huh. The, the, the grains had this project to terraform the world into a monoculture of nothing but corn or nothing but wheat or whatever. Uh-huh. And they pursue the strategy that the angiosperms have perfected over millions and millions of years. Um, angiosperms are flowering plants. Flowering plants are specifically plants that have adapted to utilize symbiotic animals in their life cycle, right? Wait, say that again? I just tweeted your comment. Angiosperms, the flowering plants, are distinct from earlier plants in that the angiosperms require symbiotic animals in their life cycle. Right. They need pollinators, they need seed spreaders, they need defenders against predation, and so on. You're totally freaking me out in the best way right now. Yeah, please continue. Right. Um, so these grain plants did a pretty unique take on the angiosperm strategy of recruiting an animal to advance their agenda. Uh Uh-huh. The animal that wheat recruited was the homo sapien. Uh Uh-huh. It convinced homo sapiens to stop moving around as hunter-gatherers and to stay in place and cultivate wheat. Yeah, that's crazy, dude. And the consequences of cultivating wheat is you fucking plow the fields, kill everything, remove all of the pests, and plant only wheat. And then you move the course of rivers in order to water the wheat. Uh And then you build giant fortress citadels to defend the territory that you planted wheat all over. Uh So something happened. Yeah, that's a hell of a... I call this this the birth of, of the old gods which are actually the the result of the interaction between wheat and the other grains and the homo sapien symbionts that have become bonded to it. The reason that we live like termites is because we have the same ecology of termites. Termites are farmers. Termites farm fungus. Uh Uh-huh. This is what farmers do. 
they create gods or maybe gods create them connect the, the the dots on the gods thing so you're talking about the, the, the god is comes out of the social relationship of like it's like mankind it's a massive egregore. yeah so mankind is relating to what the plants want right so what i'm saying is that um that on a sort of genetic evolutionary strategy level the the wheat plants in whatever form including possibly in the psychic manipulation of their own egregore um brought in a helper animal to do it for them right and we are that helper animal and that wheat egregore then transferred into the mental substrate of humans so there's now the the wheat farming egregore that is is yeah co-evolved it's running simultaneously on the wheat stuff and on the human stuff so there's now vegetable mind and animal mind working at the same time to form this gestalt entity Anyway, so Chaos Prime asked, why should we prefer vegetable to animal? So I said, we, well, you shouldn't prefer it. You should understand the structure of this system, yeah. that we are as much plant as animal. Man, there's something so deeply fucking alien about that. It's so amazing. It's just so deeply alien about, like, thinking about wheat consciousness, except for it can't be alien because it's, like, ours. It's, like... It's us. You know? Yeah. All right, so here's a really, really scary extrapolation from it. Um, we are currently experiencing a large-scale increase of the amount of carbon in the atmosphere, which is having consequences for the climate. Um, the consequences are going to be sort of unpredictable in a lot of ways, and there's going to be you know, changes that we don't understand. But here's some things that we think we do understand. Um, the amount of carbon in the atmosphere is increasing, and the overall average heat of the atmosphere is increasing too. Mm -hmm. Did you know that wheat as a plant has a unique evolutionary adaptation in its carbon fixation cycle? It's called a C4 grain. It fixes four carbon molecules per metabolic cycle instead of three, which is what most plants do. This is especially an adaptation for hot environments with lots of carbon in them. Bro. And, so I'm saying that, and our, that there's our, a plausible story that wheat has forced humans into a style of civilization that is terraforming the planet into something more suitable for them. This is this is like some kind of like additional dimensional take on paleo diet. <laughs> <laughs> like when you add in the, the old gods and the wheat, because I've heard that like the wheat is ruining our civilization and it's a bad, bad deal or whatever. But like yeah. this, ad, this adds something that I love. Um, but here's another one. Yeah. Uh, the great lie of civilization is that the grains are not psychoactive plants. 